In this video, we're gonna show you the power of an easy one light setup to go from this poop to this final image. What's up friends, my name is Pi, welcome to SR Lounge. This is my friend, Chelsea. We're gonna link her up, you guys should check out her work. And uh, look, we wanted to show you guys just how easy and simple a lighting setup can be that can get you really fantastic results. So let's go ahead and dive straight into this. Now, Chelsea is sitting on a stool. What I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna take a natural light image just with the overhead lights so you guys have a before to compare against. I'm using the Canon R6. I have on here a 50 millimeter Sigma uh, using the Canon RF adapter. And it actually works really well. I'm honestly pretty surprised at how quickly it can focus through the adapter, it's pretty awesome. Okay, so I'm gonna set this to F2. We're gonna go to one, 160th, no, let's go 1 200th of a second, 3200 ISO. I'm gonna let it try and figure out the white balance. And we're gonna put Chelsea right there. In fact, Chelsea, why don't you do the pose that we're actually gonna do? So like go into an actual pose there, yes. And we're gonna make that the pose for the before versus the after, okay? Actually, do you wanna bring the arm in just so it's not like sticking out of the frame? There we go. That's it, that's what you're gonna do, okay. So we got our before shot. Now I know what you guys are thinking. You guys are like, well, Pi, you didn't even set the white balance. You're dumb. You're stupid. All sorts of other comments. Just hold yourself. Relax. Look, even if I set the white balance to something more appropriate for these lights, you still don't get really that great of a result. We get kind of like somewhat cleaned up light. It just doesn't look good either way. So the first thing that I'm gonna recommend that you do is obviously we want to think through the camp framework, right? Thinking composition first. Well, composition is pretty simple here because we're just doing portraits. So I'm going to basically be standing here, working in and out, shooting her against this background. So let's talk about ambient light. So the first thing that I want to do is actually nix all of this ambient light. And the easiest way to do that is just to turn off the light. So that's going to be my first step. Okay, so the light is off now. And I'm going to go ahead and take the exact same shot. We have a tiny bit of natural light coming to the scene just so Mike on behind the scenes can actually film this. But let me take that same shot so you guys can see with the exact same settings, this is how much natural light is coming into the room. It's very dark. What I'm gonna do now is actually cut away all of that light. So I'm gonna reduce my ISO down to 800. And if I take the shot again, you see practically nothing. So what I'm doing is cutting away all the ambient light in our room because I want to only put my own light back in. Now let's talk about what that light is. And I will open up the, the windows in just a second so you guys can see a little bit, or maybe we'll turn on the modeling light, but I want you guys to see what this looks like now. So now let's talk about modify or add light, right? We don't have any light here to really modify, so we're gonna be adding light. So when we're thinking camp framework, M, add light. M, add, modify or add, adding. So what we have over here is the Profoto B10 Plus, and it's firing through a large umbrella. These umbrellas, umbrellas in general, are some of the most underrated modifiers that you can get. They're inexpensive, at least relatively compared to other modifiers. They're easy to take around, they're easy to set up, they're absolutely awesome. Now people hate on them because they kind of spill light everywhere, right? But when used well, these umbrellas are incredible modifiers. So I have the B10 Plus set up. Now I don't want you guys to get lost in gear, right? So I prefer Profoto products. I love the products, the quality, the design, everything about them, but use what you have, okay? I'm shooting this at one power. This is the lowest power setting that I can get to on the B10. So I'm gonna be between one and two power, which is like 1 uh, 1 1 28th power or 1 2 56th power. That's where I'm at. So anything is gonna work here. So now just so we can see what this light is exactly doing, let's turn on the modeling light. This is one of my favorite features of a studio light, or really I think any of the Profoto lights have modeling lights now built into them. But you can see exactly where the light is landing. So we're lighting up not only Chelsea, but the backdrop, and you'll notice on the other side I have a V-flat. I prefer V-flats from V-flat world. They fold up, they're really nice and convenient to use. But look, again, I don't want you guys to get lost in, I don't have this, I don't have that, and all the other things that you could possibly kind of think of. So this is literally just a piece of foam core that we have cut in half and taped in the middle. 
but what that's gonna do is the light's gonna come over to this side, it's gonna bounce off of this, and we're gonna create a fill. Why? Because the shadows on Chelsea's face would get too deep otherwise, and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. The background is actually a hand-painted backdrop by Alex. We'll link him up as well. Uh, I actually found him on Instagram. He makes hand-painted backdrops, and they're very affordable. Um, you know, so, so check those out as well. So if you don't have this backdrop, you guys can always just use a solid color background. A dark one like the one we have back there would be totally fine. A light color one would be totally fine. Any solid color background is totally fine. So with this setup, let's go ahead and do this. I wanna minus out this guy. So I'm just gonna fold it up and we're gonna take the shot as is. Good catch. Uh, let's cut that out of the video because we don't want to show how much of a complete idiot I am. So, you know, um, yeah, we can't show model being abused. You're just going to cut all this out. Mike's nodding and I know this is going to be in the video, so that's fine. Okay. Let's go ahead and take this shot now, Chelsea, and you're going to do the exact same thing that you did. And you know, Next rookie move, turn on the remote. Okay, so the only thing that I forgot to do at this point is to set my white balance back to daylight. That's like three rookie moves in a row. I dropped the V flat on you. You know, it weighs like two pounds. Let's, let's, like one pound, let's be real. Okay, white balance, we're gonna set this back up to daylight. Okay, now let's pop that shot. And this is already fantastic. I mean, you compare this to our original shot, it's crazy, right? But you will notice that our shadows on the other side of Chelsea right here are pretty deep. So it's not a bad thing. Like shooting with deep shadows, this is a stylistic preference, right? So if you want to have those deep shadows, leave this just the way it is. But I would like to actually add a little bit of fill to that. And that's where the V-flat's gonna come in place. We're gonna go ahead and put this right here. And what I'm looking at is where it's gonna bounce and kind of how it's gonna come back towards Chelsea. So I'm sort of gonna move this a little bit more behind. So it's almost acting like it's gonna open up some of the shadow and with the modern light, you can actually see what's gonna happen. So if I close this, you can actually see where the light is landing on her cheek, right? So I could actually position this exactly kind of where I want for that fill to be. If I want the fill to be stronger, I'm gonna push the V flat in closer, okay? If I want the fill to be more subtle, I'm gonna bring the V flat away a little bit more. So I'm gonna position about right there. Now let's take this last little shot right here. And I love that. Okay, so look at the way that it fills those shadows against the back. Now the only thing that I wanna do differently is I think I filled a little bit too much of that light, okay? So what I'm gonna do is just back it off a little tiny bit. So let's do that. Okay, so let's take that shot again. That's perfect. So now I have this subtle amount of fill, but I still have shadows back there, okay? Let's just check on everything else. Background looks good, everything looks great. So now I'm gonna shoot away. So Chelsea, pose at will. Now you guys get to see Chelsea's special sauce. This is what she does. Love that. Pull the hair all the way over to this side and do some shots where you're leaning against the, the knee and hugging in, almost using the hair as like your background. You know what I mean? Like kind of bring the hair up a little bit, the head up a little bit. There, just like that. Hold that right there. Oh, I love that. Turn towards that light a little bit. I'm gonna come in close. Love those.
That's super cute. Do that one again where you're leaning kind of forward, pull it up a little bit. I want you to laugh through it. There. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. What I want you guys to take away from this is understanding that your setups don't have to be crazy and complicated to get really great images out of them. In the meantime, be sure to follow Chelsea. We will link her up again. You guys can follow me at Born Uncreative on TikTok or Pydris on Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you guys back here same time, same place on YouTube next week. Peace.